Hey, it's David. Hey, it's Tim. And we're worth it Fridays. What the nani? Welcome to episode four of our podcast, where we talk about games possibly worth your Fridays. Because games are expensive nowadays, we want to bring you guys more conversations and more opinions every Friday on games new or old that are still worth playing right now. If you guys like what we're doing, give us a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and enjoy the rest of this video. Take it away, David. All right, so welcome, guys. So we have two special guests here. Uh, if we have Tim to wave at us, it's our boy Tim. Yay, hey, guys. Hey, Tim. Hey, welcome to the show. <laughs> and we have our other boy here is Matt. Give us a wave, Matt. Hi, everyone. Hey. So um, let's say, let's introduce Tim and Matt based on what kind of gamers they are. So we'll start with Matt. What kind of gamer are you, buddy? Uh, I would consider myself a casual gamer, uh, mostly specialized in platformers. Uh, I think just because my upbringing, I grew up, you know, with Super Mario Bros, uh, light RPGs, stuff like Legend of Zelda, other platformers like Kirby, Donkey Kong, just the casual type of games. Yeah. Nice, nice. And how about you, Tim? Yeah, I would also say I'm a casual gamer. Um, I find myself always playing games like RPG type games uh, where you can really immerse yourself into the story and feel like you're the real hero. So I think those are the kind of games I like. Nice, nice. So I just realized we have two Tims here. So our special guest, Tim, I guess I'll call him Casual Tim. because he Casual <laughs> Tim. Casual sure. Tim. All right, CT. All right, here we go. Okay, so we'll start with the episode. Today episode, we're going to talk about Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. And just want to let you guys know that for me personally, I have never played any of Legend of Zelda games. The only close encounter I played with Legend of Zelda was Super Smash Bros. on the N64. I fell in love with the character Link. So I was just like, cool guy, he has a sword and a shield. So that's how I knew about it, but I never got the chance to play. So maybe today's episode, these guys can convince me to say, yes, this game might be worth it for my Fridays uh, to play this game. So, um, just a quick summary of what Zelda Breath of the Wild, from what I understand, is it's an open world exploration game where you can literally just run around, glide, and climb every single mountain, I guess, from what I heard. And as well, they have a lot of monsters and puzzles, which is pretty cool. Um, Tim, is there anything else you want to add about Zelda Breath of the Wild? That pretty much summarizes what I think Breath of the Wild is. It's very puzzle-based. There's tons of puzzles. Um, it's not as dungeon-based as I think previous Zeldas used to be. Um, mm -hmm. But they, you have like these uh, there's different monsters. And I think the whole point more so is exploration. So, yeah. All right. Cool, cool, cool. And um, just curiosity out of all of it. Um, was there a very favorite Zelda game that you'd like to play or have played? Start with uh, CT here, Casual Tim. You have yeah, <laughs> it, it would be this one definitely. Because um, the only other ones I really played were uh, way back in the day, like on your Game Boy. So like Link's Awakening was like two D for for nice view, um, and, and those were fun. Don't get me wrong, but definitely this one. Um, yeah, by by landslide. Oh, cool, cool, cool. And how about Matt? Um, I think I would have to go with this one as well. I know that's a bit of a cop-out answer, but <laughs> if we had to exclude this game from the title, just like besides Breath of the Wild, I think my favorite would have to be Wind Waker. I just, something about that art style I really like. Um, I also really like that the weapons don't break, but we'll get into that in a, in a bit. <laughs> All right, sweet, sweet. And how about you, Tim? Um, same for me, too. I, I would also say Breath of the Wild if I could. Um, but I, for definitely for Wind Waker is like one of those really memorable Zeldas that just captivates you with like, even though it's a very samey story, but like just the art style again and like just sailing everywhere was like really fun. Okay, sweet. Awesome. So from what I understand, this game came out two or three years ago. I know for sure it came out when the Switch came out. Three years ago. Three years ago, so yeah. So it says a lot about this launch game. So um, yeah, let's just start with the, our review and an impression of the game. So uh, Tim, what was your first impression when you purchased oh. this game? My first impression? Yeah. Ooh, 
Um, I, I think a lot of people, and I think if you look back at reviews, even like the, the, the original reviews, I think everyone will say the opening moments of Zelda uh, Breath of the Wild uh, definitely, it, it reveals uh, like, it's re it's a really simple reveal, but I think it reveals pretty much everything about like what you're going to do in the game. Because you, like, you wake up, you climb out of the, 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 the cave thing, and then a, a small cutscene plays with like a piano, like, rift or whatever thing and then he just like walks to the cliffside and all you see is like this huge view of everything and it's like wow there's this like huge world that like you can explore and as you like progress through it's like you slowly learn like you know like what you what else can you do with the game so like that's literally i think the uh the same impression i had back then and even like replaying it too was uh was, was crazy how about you, Casualty? What was your impression based on this game? Well, I actually only started playing it like two years after it was released, like 2019. Um, yeah, but but I loved it. Like exactly what Tim said. Like it, it's just huge world, and um, I, I couldn't believe that there were no loading screens. Like when you go into different areas, it was just like always there and. Yeah, that like sandbox type game just like blew my mind, especially with like such high quality of, of like engagement as well as um, the visuals as well. Yeah. Oh, nice. And uh, how about you, Matt? Your impression? Of that? I was actually really looking forward to this game for a long time. Um, some of you guys might remember if you had the Wii U. Um, this was a uh, one of the last titles for the Wii U, and for a long time, there's just there. Nintendo was teasing it for a long time, showing footage of it, and it didn't even have a name. We called it Zelda U, like on the online forums for a long time. And when it finally released in 2017, when I had my Switch, that was when I first played it, and I was definitely really blown away by the visuals. Um, I I think it's really memorable what Tim was saying. He painted a good picture of when you like walk towards that cliff and then there's those few notes on the keyboard that on the piano that makes you really feel immersed in this uh, beautiful, highly saturated world. Um, and it really creates an atmosphere of um, just an inviting sense of wanting to explore. Like it encourages exploration is what I'm trying to say. And uh, there's very, very little cutscenes I guess until you walk down the hill and you run into the old man but even then he's not really hand holding like holding your hand throughout the game and I think that's a good uh, metaphor throughout the rest of the game because they really don't hold your hand too much so that's that's kind of the impression you get like within the first five minutes of the game alright so based on your guys' response it seems like it's a pretty good impression already um, I was just curious for a guy who hasn't played Legend of Zelda in regards to story, like, do I need to play the other Zelda games to kind of know Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild? Like, what do you guys think? No, I wouldn't say so. Um, I, I do know that around 2011 or so, Nintendo released the official, like, timeline for oh, the Legend man. of Zelda. I see Tim's face right now, he's reacting to that. <laughs> but uh, it's it's pretty convoluted. It has like different timelines and different forked paths on Link's journey. And, you know, this isn't a spoiler alert by any means, but none of the Links are the same Links. They're like each other's ancestors what? and all that. So it's, no, no, I wouldn't say you have to Whoa. know anything about the previous games to play this game. Oh. It stands on its own two feet pretty good. Oh, nice, nice. And, um, Casual Tim, like, what do you think of the whole story for Breath of the Wild? Is it interesting? Is there, like, a lot of details? Like, what do you think overall? Yeah, the, the story itself, um, you you kind of forget about it, to be honest, because you're so immersed into exploring. Um, like, I remember when I first started playing, I put in, like, a good 15 hours into the game, just, like, running around before I even got to, like, the first part of the story, like the first divine beast, right? So I'm like, oh yeah, there's a there's a plot line I should follow. Um, so the story itself, it's it's, it's good. I, I like it. Um, a little bit sad, dark for me because it's it's pretty much like post apocalyptic, right? Um, but it, it gets you, it does get you like wanting to know more, right? And you want to like kind of discover. Um, yeah, don't let us down. The the 
I don't know what happened to Link in the past, like, and you're really curious, you're invested, right? Like, I'm always looking for those uh, snapshots so that I can get memories of Zelda and Link. I'm like, yes, mm. like I know a little bit more. And then, obviously, at the end, I didn't get it all, but I, I still looked it up on YouTube to see, you know, <laughs> the storyline. <laughs> Fair enough. Same. Yeah, kind of the logical story of these games is like prequel to sequel to sequel to prequel. Is that kind of what the chronological is? These days for Legend of Zelda, it's like it's like three timelines from like what I remember. So it's like it's really convoluted, depending on like like which even like which timeline you're just like talking about. Yeah, <laughs> the way that the game kind of paints the storyline is that Link, when he wakes up in that chamber, that cave um, that Tim mentioned earlier, he lost all his memories. When you meet characters, they know who you are, and they're like, "Hey, don't you remember me from?" you know, this time, whenever, and like, he doesn't remember. So you learn things about Link, I guess, yourself, as he recovers those memories. That's kind of how the storyline works. Sounds interesting. I'm yeah. Kind of like and one thing, I think one thing I really appreciated about it was um, there's no linear progression. Like you can um, go into one zone or the next zone and then progress there and it all leads back to the same place. So you kind of, um, you gotta choose your own story, almost, right? Your own sequence of story, because you're always looking to the past. So I think mm -hmm. I really appreciated that, because I was in control of my own destiny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think to add on to what uh, Casualton was saying, um, yeah, just being able to, like, I guess traditional RPGs or most RPGs, you have like a level system generally. So it's like you like either like cheese your way through some parts or you skip some parts and you like run to a a wall essentially because like you're either too low level at that point or you're like not well equipped anymore right but breath of the wild it's they're just like hey there's these three main quest lines essentially saying like you can do uh one is like finishing uh the divine beast uh, the other is uh the main i guess the overall story which is defeat ganon spoilers uh, and then the third one, I think, was something else, but I don't remember. But as, oh, I think finding the memories. Uh, I think what Kendall was saying with the the snapshots and the actual memories of uh, Zelda and stuff as well. So yeah, they, they just like here's these three big quests, no particular order. Yeah. Um, and then you just yeah choose your own destiny. I think that's a really good word for it. Cool, cool. I like the flexibility from what I hear. Just do whatever you want. It's open world. Um, I guess my next question is, for me, I'm, I'm really into, like, combat. Like, uh, not like Street Fighter combat, but like Spider-Man, PS4 combat, uh, Devil May Cry combat. I was just curious, uh, what was your thoughts on the combat? As Matt kind of, like, implied earlier, uh, actually he said it straight out, like, the weapons break, right? So that, that was, like, so hard for me, because I'm, I'm a bun smasher, right? So I don't really, like strategize before I like beat monsters or whatever. So uh, now I, I felt like I had to like be really frugal with my weapons. Like I'm like, oh, okay, this this monster, he's weak level. I'm gonna use the crappy weapon so that my good weapon doesn't break. Um, but it, it really taught me to like, almost like have, it forced me to have skill while fighting monsters and then mm -hmm. But I thought that, and then obviously after I watched some videos of combat, I'm like, okay, these guys are actually skillful and I am not doing it right. But I think as Tim uh, alluded to earlier, um, because there's no level system, yeah, you really have to focus on yeah, skill and reaction time in a sense and planning and strategies. Uh, I think for me, the combat and just how the game deals with combat, I think it's amazing, not just from the weapons level, like the weapons, like the swords, the shields and everything like that, uh, they do break and they do wear down. And I, I think I was similar to Tim where, or casual Tim, where I would kind of budget my weapons. And I think a lot of the times I actually found out I made my way through the game with a lot of bad weapons because I would stash the good weapons and it almost came too precious to use. So I would have all these like guardian swords <laughs> that I just kind of never touch. And um, I would use like, you know, rusty swords or like, you know, wooden sticks, depending on the, the bad guys, I guess, to, to beat them up. 
And it, when they'd smash, I'd just find other replacements like a Korok leaf or something like that. But um, in addition to the actual combat, I was impressed with the, I guess, the elements because the weapons and the gear, they interact with the, the world because uh, for example, if you're in a thunderstorm and you have a metal sword and a metal shield, it'll start zapping to let you know that you're going to get strikes by lightning very soon. And if you do, Link will lose like ton of his hearts and he'll just fall. And that'll just keep on happening until you uh, smarten up and then you change out your inventory. Um, same thing goes for like wooden weapons. If you're in like a volcano, like a really hot area, your weapons and your bows will just start catching on fire as well. So it's like... It adds a very interesting element um, and sometimes that just hurts you and it just like destroys your weapon. Other times like you know if you pull out an arrow and now you have a flaming arrow that you can shoot in this like volcano area. So it's um, it's it's very unique. It's a, a fresh take on you know weapon system. Uh, I think that um, a lot of people complained about the swords and the weapons breaking down. And I, I was pretty annoyed with that initially, but I think it's a, I think it's a good thing overall, only because it forces you to think out of the box, uh, think more creatively. Um, my last note on that, on thinking creatively, would be, I tend to rush into combat headfirst, just thinking I can button mash my way through things because that works for like, you know, eighty percent of all the other games out there. But for something like this, I just kept on dying in the same spot, trying to kill the stupid bacoblins camp or something like that they have a camp in front of like a giant skull and i would keep on dying and then the loading screen actually tells you like hey if you keep on dying <laughs> in this place try to think of another way to beat them right <laughs> it actually tells you like hey you basically suck like um, get more creative and there are multiple ways to kill the enemies like you could push a bomb down a hill or a barrel or you could just you don't have to rush into them so um, yeah, combat uh, for this game I think was very impressive. Yeah, um, gameplay wise, yeah, I, I think if if this was three years ago when the game released, um, there was so much mystery behind like the events that uh, Matt was talking about, like like a thunderstorm. You know, nobody expected. Oh, I have a metal weapon. If I keep it on me, thunder is just gonna like strike you, uh. and like nobody like at the time knew this. So like. If this happened to you for like the first time, you're like, "Hey, Matt, did you know what? Like this crazy thing happened. You know, like lightning struck me." And I'm like, "Wait, how?" I was like, "I don't, I don't know." And then, and then like we like realize it's, "Oh, wait, it's like, it's because I have a metal sword." So now, like I, I think, like something like this nowadays is like I, I guess we will miss that because like there's guides upon guides or videos just being like, "Oh, well, if you have this, just switch it off, right, or whatever." But for the actual, like, I think fighting, since you're comparing this, or uh, I guess. Um, referencing to like Devil May Cry or stuff like that. This isn't really a super actiony game, um, so the combat's actually pretty light. Like it's pretty simple. Like you have like one button to strike. Uh, you can jump. You can block. And uh, the thing that they that they do really good that do really good is the like the the what do you call it like the quick or like the the last second flurry like rush? yeah the flurry rush like the last second dodge and it gives you a chance to, like barrage your attacks of like whatever those are like that's, those are like really cool like proud like feeling moments it's like oh man that was so sick i gotta do it again and then you like and you then die because you can't dodge <laughs> yes i died a lot from not being able to dodge and like something that's interesting about the game is the um i guess the like bokoblins or any any of really the the guys that you fight they're they don't swing the same way like twice like they, they actually switch it up and they might like swing down at you then you have to dodge this way they might like you know jab at you and stuff like that depending on the weapons that they have and i think one of the most difficult uh characters is the mini boss uh, the lionels i i have a confession i never actually defeated a lionel and this actually plays into i guess like the freedom of the game to explore or in, in my case, to avoid um, the Lionels, because Tim's like, what? I, I thought I thought you had to beat them. <laughs> I went into this cage near the end and the door shut, and I just like, yeah, when that <laughs> happened to me, I just died, and then I respawned, and then I just walked around that tower, right? So, like, the Lionels, they they have, I think, like five or six different movesets where you have to, like, learn how to parry and, like, flurry rush them. Um, you, can, you can hop on their back and start slashing them, too, as they're, like, trying to buck you off. 
So really good insight about the combat. I, I do think it's a little pre pretty light, like you said, not like other games, but still enjoyable. They don't they don't throw all of their focus towards the combat. And um, not only not only with the combat, but like you can you can shoot like the characters from far away using like your um, what are those bombs called? Like those abilities that you get? Oh, uh, wow, actually, oh, the, the name of those. On your, on your iPad, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on the iPad, on the iPad. For anyone with a Wii U? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you can, like, create combat from, like, a distance, too. Like, you don't even have to fight them head-on. You can, like, drop bombs from far away, and then, like, their aggro will go off, and then they'll have, like, a question mark. They won't know where you are. Um, you can make them fight each other like you sometimes they're just sleeping at nighttime and you just steal their weapons and run away as well so um, it's I think it's not all about the combat it's about like how you interact with the environment how you interact with the um, NPCs and like the monsters in the game too that's interesting because there's not always like a quick and obvious solution to a camp of um, monsters you know just sitting around there so and there's usually like a loot or treasure that comes with it if you uh, take over. So yeah. So um, so we can move on. Um, we can move on to I think possibly talk more about like uh like the puzzles and stuff as well because I, I think uh, Zelda games are known for puzzles and or, or I guess puzzles and dungeons possibly. But uh, I know I think there's a general complaint or a general consensus that like uh, Breath of the Wild does not have as many dungeons as um as comparing to uh, previous games as I, I think people compare the divine beast uh, to the dungeons I guess and the shrines are more so uh, puzzles I, I think the puzzles are also the strength of breath of the wild as well um, previous Zelda games would probably like if you know you give hook you get a hook shot and you have to use a hook shot or you'll know that you'll have to use a hook shot for well either the dungeon or the, the boss battle or whatever right um, but for these like shrines and some other uh, open world puzzles out there, there's you can absolutely just use anything um, once you're given like a certain like uh, power up iPad thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like like once you're given the bomb, you can use bombs however you like. Like you can yeah throw it, throw like roll it down a certain thing. Like the game lets you or allows you to use the tools that you have so it's there's like bombs there's uh like a pillar like ice creation pillar thing there's like what is it like stasis something um, there, there's all these different like elements or tools that you have and if you watch like any possible like speed runs of zelda nice. like people have completed this game in like 30 i think probably faster but the last time i checked was like 39 minutes or something and people have used like ways to like like do like certain tricks like use bombs and stuff and like all they do is like they're like able to like fly around like, s like anywhere super fast or something it's like it's pretty crazy and even like solving some puzzles like i are like the way we see things is like we see a door that's locked we find key we unlock door right but some of these people they're like well this door there's no ceiling so i'm going to use this bomb to like get me higher and somehow jump up again and like reach that ledge of the wall and then like climb over it without even like unlock finding the key and stuff so like people have just like skipped entire puzzles and i'm just like here like what <laughs> they hack <laughs> yeah um uh, yeah like the game rewards you for that like it doesn't penalize you um i wouldn't say you get rewarded in the sense of like you get anything additional but you kind of get that satisfaction of like hey, I beat the system um, for this dungeon or whatever, but the game's actually like, yeah, I wanted you to try to find new ways to do it than just the obvious way. <laughs> and uh, I think, David, if you're not familiar with like the dungeons and the shrines, basically uh, the game litters a bunch of like underground shrines all over. And once you go to them, um, it's puzzle based. So there's a lot of puzzles where you need to find like a key, like that key might be like a, orb or a ball or something like that that you need to like get into like its finished place and sometimes that might involve uh, link picking it up and finding a way to get there um there are these abilities called runes that uh, we're talking about where you get these additional abilities added onto your ipad where um, oh, yeah. you have to incorporate them right where you one might be stasis where you can freeze a moving object and you might need to do that 
Um, like you might need to freeze it so that you can hit it a bunch. When you hit an object a bunch when it's in stasis, it gains momentum. And then when the timer runs out, then it just flies, right? Um, so there's abilities like that where um, you have to use them to finish the puzzles. And it's not a dungeon in the traditional sense of like, there's usually not any monsters in there. I think there's like a couple where there's some um, little mechanical guardian guys that you have to fight. Um, and usually the rewards are, um, it's like a currency called an orb, where if you have enough of them, you can trade these orbs for either one heart containers so that you can have more like health bar basically or you can have um, a stamina bar where you have more stamina to run and climb and do things like that because anytime you run out of stamina link just kind of gives up you like if you're in the middle of swimming he'll just drown and you're dead <laughs> right um, and only like very few of these shrines are actually mandatory only a few of them actually add to the story and you actually have to go through the rest of them you just kind of find and explore on your own and it's like up to you whether you want them um, i think some of them have some special gear and outfits but most of them, you're just getting that orb at the end. Yeah. Yeah, per personally, I like, I hate dungeons where you're stuck in it for like a good three, four hours just trying to figure out like what to do. So um, these puzzles were like a really nice treat for me, especially as, you know, a casual player. Um, cause, cause at first, like I only thought of them as like, oh, they're teleport points um, or they're, they're for my stamina or, <laughs> hearts and then after a while i actually like enjoyed them because like all of them are so different from each other right like you actually have to figure out new ways to solve it every single time and um i'm, I'm gonna confess um yeah I, I definitely looked up walkthroughs for some of them are like, too hard for me but <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not... <laughs> yeah i'm just kidding uh, I did yeah, so... <laughs> <laughs> uh... I'm with you, Casual Tim. I'm that. I'm not that yeah. type of puzzle, so I'm like, I give up. Yeah. <laughs> I have a question for you guys. Yeah, yeah. What would, what like for? I guess for Casual Tim and Tim, is there any game that we can cap like that we can compare these dungeons to to kind of give Dave an idea of what they're like? Uh, no, yeah, definitely. Um, I think a lot of those like arcade type games, they, it, it plays off of that, right? Like I remember there was one puzzle where you had to like move the, the island around to get like a ball somewhere right and that, that's totally like an old iphone game that we used use to your ipad on. yeah 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 are you guys talking about that like the game where it's like basically a maze with the marble in there yeah yeah yeah. Like, yeah 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 they do have those yeah yeah so there's like a bunch of those types of games um and it's we used to play that for fun but now we play it to get you know stamina or heart it's even better yeah, um, if anything, it's, it's like kind of like what I think Casual Tim was saying, like the arcadey style, so like Overcooked, Overcooked 2, uh, whatever that like, right, that, that renovation job so one as well. Everything's laid out for you, like how do you like fix it like, essentially, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That sounds very interesting. All right. So far, I'm kind of like, <laughs> uh, but um, I did hear about like DLC about these games, so uh, I was just curious, like, um, have you guys played the DLC? What are your thoughts on it? I touched on the DLC a little bit. I did buy it, but I had already completed the game. I don't want to say 100% because I think when I actually beat the game the first time, it was like 10%. And that just shows how much content is actually in the base game without the DLC being added. Um, but one thing that I really appreciated and I don't know if you remember the name of the feature, Tim, but basically there's ba a map that shows you your entire path. Anywhere that you've explored, the DLC will show you where you've walked so that you can actually keep track. Uh, because the map is so big, I hate to say it, but you're, you get lazy. You're like, oh, I don't want to travel here. I'm kind of lazy to go that far. And something that's really deceptive about Breath of the Wild is you're like, you think, oh, that's not too far. I can, I can get there pretty quick. I'll, beat the quest and then I'll get the item that I want. But in reality, what happens is that you get distracted by um, just something you see in the distance. Like, hey, is that a horse? That's a cool horse. I want to get that horse. Or is that a stable? Is that another shrine? So um, there, there are even like monsters that can like spawn out of thin air while you're just walking in uh, at nighttime. Or there's like the uh, uh, Yiga clan, I think they're called. They just start spawning out of nowhere. So it's very easy to get distracted. So this feature of the map tracking 
you everywhere you go was very helpful so that you could remember and not double up on the places that you've already been. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't try the hard mode. It comes with like a hard mode where um, you could get, I think the ultimate reward is that you can get a, a light bike, basically like a motorcycle that allow you to traverse the land very fast. But I, I didn't have the patience, unfortunately, to uh, put up with all that after I already beat the main quest. So uh, I think Tim's going to have to chime in on uh, the DLC. Um, the... Well, okay, so since this is a Switch game, um, I'm, I'm also curious what you guys think of the Amiibo. Uh, do you... Well, like, I, because the Amiibos for Switch games add certain elements to it, and, uh, well, the Amiibo doesn't add that too much, but, I mean, <laughs> like, they add either, like, extra, like, um, like, weapons or armor or uh, just, like, general, like, materials, so, like, for, like, extra meat extra fish but do you guys would you guys also consider that as dlc as well or um i, I would i actually i asked matt this yesterday because um we saw a video of dark link and i'm like well what the what, what's that like how how'd they get that right and then he, he told me he pretty much had to buy it with uh like amiibos or a dlc so then I'm like okay that that makes sense so i think yeah, I, I like how it enhances the game, but it's like really not necessary, right? Um, so, so you can pay just, you know, the 80 and still enjoy the game. <laughs> pay to win? Pay to win. I, I agree. <laughs> I agree with Casual Tim on that. I, I would consider it DLC. It adds enough to the game to make it slightly different without breaking the game um, to avoid exactly what you just said. Um, paid to win. I think a lot of the amiibo is exactly what Tim was saying. It just gives you some like extra food. Um, I think, you know, some of the special ones would be like, I think you can get Epona, the horse, and like some other special things, but like having Epona is not gonna, you know, make you invincible or anything like that. It, it's, there's other horses that you can get. You don't, by no means do you need to get um, Epona. And I can't remember if Dark Link was a DLC or if it was just like a really hard. Um, like some of the quests that they make you do is just like really stupid long and like uh, fetch questy to get like a good item. And if you're really dedicated, you can, um, you know, follow through and get the item. Um, sometimes they add like buffs or like additional um, abilities. For example, one of them, there's like a climbing gear that makes you like climb faster. And if you guys like have played breath of the wild then you'll know that climbing is like a big part of it and you're very limited by how much stamina you have before link just gives up and you just fall to the bottom um so yeah i, I would consider that dlc and i i personally didn't really try any of the amiibos but i've watched a lot of reviews and literally you're just standing there you tap the amiibo and then like it falls out of the sky so it's, it's kind of funny that way cool um sweet so i mean aside from that i'm not going to cover like I guess the minor DLC, which is kind of like the quest, the fetch quest, I guess you could say, uh, for like the extra armor. There's like, you can get like uh, Ganon's armor. You can get, uh, I, I think there was like a Twilight or one of the, there's like very, a lot of previous Zelda like armor cosmetics in the thing. And they all have certain effects too. So they're actually really cool to have and try and play around with as well. Um, but there was essentially three major DLCs. Uh, Matt already covered I th the master mode, is what we call it, the the extra hard mode. Um, I didn't also didn't go through that 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 far, um, uh, but from what I've seen from like other people, I think the what I've heard is that like once you get past the initial like the hump of like the, the uh, beginning island and like once you get your footing, um, it's just more or less the same. I guess is what I've heard. Which is fine. I think that was the first DLC that released, so it gave people an extra challenge if people were still playing, and it's 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 a good challenge too. So, the the two other DLCs uh, are my or more more so my favorite. I think everyone's favorite, possibly if people get the chance to play them. Um, the first one is the or the second one is this this new mode uh, within within the game, not a separate I guess uh, difficulty, where. Um, once you go into this mode, you drop all your inventory uh, temporarily, and you enter this. Uh, I forgot what it's called, but you enter this like kind of like separate like dungeon uh, with nothing on hand, and you have to essentially um, like since we're talking about all this like interaction and like remembering like how to like use 
uh, like everything like combat like puzzle or like puzzle solving or like bombs like all your tools this is like putting that to the test like hardcore uh, it starts really simple it's really cool like you can like pick up sticks and you're like oh this is like i remember like the first time i picked up zelda essentially and then eventually it's like you have to like use what you have and like you have to worry about durability and stuff to actually like get through like there's like so many floors so it's like it's really cool i think that's one of the most memorable and probably like re very replayable uh, uh dlcs or modes to to play with so it's really worth the the third one um was more uh, of a story campaign kind of where it was talked it talked or referenced more of the the champions and uh the cha or I guess yeah the, the champion crew I suppose and you got more like story bits more like flashbacks I guess and um, yes and some extra like I guess equipment or stuff that you got was uh, one that Matt said earlier was a, uh, it was it wasn't a sword but it was like a weapon that essentially turned you down to one heart uh, so if you got hit you pretty much died but if you hit someone, they're also dead in one hit. So it's very, it's like a r new challenge, a new way to play. And it's really refreshing, I think, too, for, for when that DLC released as well. Now that you bring up both of the DLC, or I guess all three of the DLCs, I do remember trying um, that second one that you were talking about. I can't remember the name as well, but <laughs> it's, it's basically like waves. Like, it's like a survival, like, like COD Zombies. <laughs> Um, oh, okay. you're stripped you're stripped down of everything so you're used to having all these gear all these heart containers and everything the minute you enter the i think it's a dungeon um there's basically levels and then you have to defeat all of like the monsters within that level but you're back to square one like he's literally links literally in his boxers and um there's very basic items around like most of the basic items are like made out of wood so you have like wood sticks you have like leaves um and like buck hobbling clubs or whatever you call them and torches so um and you die very easily and you at this point you've already like beat the game you most people would have beaten the game anyways uh, you're used to having all of this protection but now you got to start from square one um so it's it's it does add replay value i think to it and in addition to what tim was saying too there's just a lot more side quests um, i think the side quests are noted by um like it'll say EX in front of the quest if it's a side quest. Um, I I never had the patience to go through all of them, um, but I do have a question. I, I was wondering if you guys actually collected a lot of the um, poop, the seeds. Yes, <laughs> yes, which you leads to getting the poop. But the, there's a Korok seeds that you uh, you just find randomly along the way. Did you guys like collect a lot of that? Did you guys go out of your way for those? Uh, I I did because you know I just want more inventory. <laughs> <laughs> like you know because I'm so frugal with my uh, weapons. <laughs> okay, I just need more space, and then I can use better weapons and not feel so bad about it. Yeah, I definitely chased them down as well. I think just to get enough inventory space. But after a while, I was like, dude, there's so many. I I I, I think what there was like 999, like actually 999 Korok seeds. I think 900 or 700, something stupid like that. <laughs> but what it is, David, is peppered throughout the whole world, there would be these hidden Korok guys. So these tiny, like, little seedling leaf-looking guys. And they would give you the most subtle clue that they're around. Like, you just might see some we something weird in the water, like, circling the water. Or you're like, hey, this rock looks like it's out of place. So you put the rock on, the like, to complete the circle of rocks that are already there. And they're just basically mini puzzles that you discover these guys. And when you find them, they reward you with a seed. And if you have enough seeds, then you can oh redeem them for uh, like additional um, slots in your either your weaponry or your swords. Or sorry, your weaponry, your shields, your uh, bows, like things like that. And Tim was saying that there's about 900 or 999 of them. Um, we didn't have the patience to look for them, but I'm sure we've seen online people who have collected them. The game rewards you with a gift called Hestu's Gift, and it's basically just a golden piece of poo that had no value. <laughs> it's more or less just like a fan service, I guess. Like, thanks for 
taking the time to find all these, but it's kind of like jokes on you, right? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Although wow. I I do want to say like I. I think because of like because there's so many uh, things to do, right? Like finding the Korok seeds, and there's so many little secrets everywhere within the world. Um, I, I think like if you were to ask someone like what well, like like in like a few words, like what what is your impression of Breath of the Wild? I think they would say like you can go anywhere, like you see it, you can go there. Uh, I I think that's the the true statement of that is like you saw like a, a mountain, and I mean like. Hind like assuming you're not hindered by the stamina but if you can climb that mountain you can actually get rewarded like generally i think nintendo really thought that out and i think they planted like anything that they can reward the player it's like hey you climb here a karak seed or you, you climb here uh some sort of like weapon or something and like wherever you go you find something i think that was really cool um and i think adding on to that as well uh, uh the map system um I not many games do this and that can, I guess, be a good or bad thing, but I think the fact that you can place your own uh, markers on the map. So the map is completely, it looks completely empty. There's no, like, quest here, and then, like, like I know, I don't, I'm sure you guys play, like, some of these games where it's, like, there's a quest here, the side quest here, uh, uh, activity here, mob here. Like, there's so many markers on the map, and you're just, like, I don't know, I'll just, like, just give me the quest or something, right? But this is, like... They, they don't show you anything aside from like the general layup of the map and then eventually as you uncover like treasures or shrines then they'll start showing up or you can place your own being like oh i know there's ore here or i know there's a weapon here um because uh what i what i eventually learned is that there's a blood moon that happens and when that happens it resets the whole kind of like resets the world again so what, whatever drops that you found actually respawn so there's like a this there, for example there's this one weapon uh, at one of the the towers uh it was like a claymore that ga that was like 56 attacks so it was like a really good claymore um and every time the blood moon happened that was the first place i went it just had to climb a little bit and the weapon was there i was like sweet i got another free claymore nice. <laughs> okay cool sweet yeah i actually um I didn't know that. I, I, I thought I only reset the monsters. I didn't know it reset the loot too. So that's why I'm so frugal with <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Once in a lifetime. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Do you guys freak out the first time the blood moon happened? I, I know that I was a little scared. I was like, what's going on? What What are these red dust things? And why is the music getting I thought I thought like a boss or something was going to spawn, right? I was like, oh, what's, what's going on? And then I had to Google it to find out what was going on. But what was your guys' reaction to first seeing that? Uh, I was like, is the game over? Did I lose? Like, is Zelda dead? You know? <laughs> it's like, oh shoot, like Ganon took over. Like, it's it's done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I was super freaked out, but... Uh, same same with, like, when those, like, uh, what? He, those, the clan guys popped up. I was, like, so scared. But I think, in a sense, that's good because it just speaks to how immersive the game was and how how much I was, like, invested. I'm like, oh no. I actually had nightmares about it after. I'm like, oh, like, they're going to pop out of nowhere. And... <laughs> that's what we call him casual tim guys <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> any scary moment nightmares <laughs> but that actually um that actually reminds me that one of the big criticisms to this game that a lot of people had and you know in the you know reviews that i've seen people kind of criticize the game for the world feeling too empty uh, and what they mean by that david is that when you're exploring the world there's very little npcs that you run into um and like of course you're going to run into the monsters but actual people that you talk to and interact to um they are mostly sometimes they're like traveling the road um most of the times though they're concentrated near like a village so like there's only like people civilization you might say like only around the village um stable areas and then there might be like travelers wanderers that you run into um, some of them might actually try to like kill you if you talk to them like just oh. unsuspectingly because um, they're 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 in disguise basically. But uh, yeah, did you guys? What do you guys think about the the criticism that the world is too empty? It feels too barren, too lonely, or whatever. The definitely the world definitely feels empty. Uh, like you can walk around and like I think like as Matt was saying earlier, you definitely can get distracted because there's other stuff to do. But as you're like kind of like traversing through the world. You just see a lot of like green or just yeah. a lot of like very same colors um 
as like you're kind of like there's not like many monsters that kind of fly around aside from like if you haven't cleared the camp but like let's say before the blood moon happens and you've like killed a bunch of monsters it, it gets more empty and empty as you kind of like traverse the world so it definitely has that feeling of like uh like you're just kind of traveling just to travel i guess and there's not aside from like some breathtaking moments like as like big uh like with like the cool like oh. visuals or i guess even photograph mode but yeah definitely agree with the the world being barren. I believe. Just to echo off that, um, the games I, I'm used to, the RPG games, I'm usually like in a group with people, or uh, we get to go to like a huge city with like where I know in my head there are like millions of people, right? Uh, so there, there's a little bit of like a sense of like loneliness in the game, because um, for the most part you're by yourself and you're pretty much doing this mission by yourself and. Um, there, there are some cities or towns or I don't know what they're called like they're I'm gonna call them towns but you, yeah. you run into people but even then like they're not like super friendly to you so it's kind of like I'm alone in this and so I, I definitely felt that especially like yeah the, I guess I would say like a lack of NPCs a lack of interaction with NPCs I think yeah yeah um, if Nintendo was doing that on purpose, like I, I think they might have been. Like I think they achieved yeah. their goal of making you feel like alone. But um, I guess maybe that could have been in um, efforts to encourage the exploration. But I know I agree with you guys. When I started this, I think I started this near the beginning of COVID or even slightly before COVID, like in February. Playing this game throughout COVID, you just feel like you really feel like it, it's amplified like the the sense of like aloneness like wow even the npcs are social distancing from me right so <laughs> yeah i i guess the the i guess a possible like counter argument to that is because um first for a lot of people at the release of the game i guess it would be a very very different now but at the release of the game when a lot more things were like a mystery some people actually called zelda like breath of the wild a very social like social experience because of events like the thunderstorm or like running into the yiga clan when they're like disguised or whatever right like those events that like you're like hey check this out and then like i guess you're socialing outside of the game whereas like kind of like our experiences nowadays because we're kind of just playing the game now is kind of like either uh, someone else will tell us that or kind of like yeah it, we're just we're just not really sharing that experience with anyone else now so it's kind of just very very alone now <laughs> compared to at the release for sure um and it, i guess just uh, uh, some other criticisms as well is like I, I think possibly a game breaking no pun intended is the the weapons breaking um for some people that like that they couldn't just they couldn't handle that you know i think uh, because you can break weapons pretty fast, uh, like Casual Tim saying, you know, you, you don't want your best weapons breaking when, when you, especially when you need them, right? So you're you're always hoarding them. And I think for a lot of people that that kind of ruined the experience for them because they either weren't playing at their best or they're just they're just too worried about keeping their best items and then that they kind of just end up playing uh, underwhelmingly for their experience. Um, so I I think. What a tip for that too is that like I, you just you just gotta you just gotta use items. <laughs> the, if it breaks, it breaks, and eventually I think what well, you can find better items eventually. But I, I definitely in the early game though, like when you have like no space to hoard like your cool items and like you you don't want to hold the the wooden stick, but like you don't want to break your you know extravagant claymore. So you're like, uh, well, you know what what something like that. I'd say. I, I would agree. Yeah, I think if I were to go back and do it again, which I, I might, I've been considering, um, definitely just use your items. Don't be afraid of them breaking. Uh, the only ones that really made me nervous is, I don't know if you guys remember, but like the heroes, sorry, the champions, they have like actual special weapons and you can actually get their weapon. And those ones actually break and then you have to like, you're like just a ton of like farm just to get that yeah. moon staff or uh whatever like those ones i actually you actually get to build a house at some point and like stash your weapons there i put those ones like on the wall <laughs> mount them on the wall and never touch those ones but um I, I think near the end game like it gets 
a little bit easier because if you actually go for the master sword quest like it's like the master sword breaks but like you can get it back pretty easily so yeah like it, it does make things a lot easier but I, I like that they don't give that to you too early in the game i think there's like a minimum amount of hearts that you need so even if you defeat ganon it's very possible to do so without ever getting the master sword if you didn't have enough heart containers yeah, and I'm yeah. I'm also curious to how how many people just skipped the the master sword in general, like not knowing that you could find the master sword. I think for maybe possible like hardcore Zelda players or like people who who know the lore of Zelda, like you know, like there's that spot or, or the actual the place of the the forest that like oh you go in there you get the the trial of the master sword. Oh, that's what the DLC is called, the trials of the master sword. I think or something like that, but. Um, yeah, it's, you can, I, I, cause I, I think when I first played it, I was like, I, I didn't even know, uh, like what this middle area was. Cause you were blocked by like fog or something. And you're like, you couldn't even fly in there. And I was like, screw this place, you know? And then after like, I played it again this year and I was like, wait, there's like a whole puzzle element to this thing. And it's like, wait, you can actually get the master sword. And then it's not over yet. You have to have a certain minimum of heart. So I was like, wait, I can't even just, uh, so, I mean, anyone who's watching this that has played Zelda, like, let us know as well. Like, if you've played with the Master Sword for your first, your first playthrough or not. Like, it's, I think those are things that, like, could have been skipped or could have changed the people's, like, experience of the game as well. Like, what's Link without his Master Sword, right? So. Wow, that's, that's a lot of information. But a lot of positive and a lot of cons. Uh, which is fair. I think that not every game is always perfect, so it's good that we can talk about it and analyze. So, um, I was just wondering, what are your guys' um, thoughts of this game still holding up today? Or is it, or another way to ask it, is it still worth it compared to all these other Is it still worth playing for your Friday? I, I would say, like, definitely like, yes, right? Because um, I'm, I'm really, like, I'm a value kind of guy, so I, for this like game i was completely like taken in by it right like um I, I couldn't let go of the game i just like wanted to like explore as much as i could or i want to like um get weapons like I, I know that tim said um the weapons breaking was like a negative part of the game but i, I think it's a charm of the game because it forces you to actually explore and to actually like get new weapons right um and then I, I can I can I know that I was invested in the game just because like my emotions were totally in it because I remember one of my favorite memories was um, like there's like this place called like the stables it's like uh, a place throughout the, like there's a bunch of stables throughout the map but there's like let's say like it's raining there's scary music and you come close to the stables and then like a like, really pretty piano would be start like would start to play and you're like. I'm safe and I know people are around and <laughs> like just that feeling of like my my emotions are just so invested in this game and that's why I think it's it's worth it right it it takes you in you're immersed you are Link himself and you can put like hundreds and hundreds of hours into this game so yeah with that said I, I totally think it's still worth it today what were you at I think, uh, yeah, I, I would agree with Casual Tim on that. Um, this game retails for $80 Canadian, and I would have no problem paying that um, for the game. I, I have paid that for the game, but if it ever goes on sale, I would definitely recommend uh, buying it. Just because of the immersive factor, um, the encouragement to explore. Um, I, you know, we were talking about how you feel alone sometimes, but you know, that's that's like t uh, Casual Tim was saying, just part of the charm of the game, right? Um, I do think that it was intentional, whether, you know, we like it or not. I think it was designed that way so that, you know, you have relief when you see the NPCs when you go to a stable. Um, they, they very much create that by, they don't have a lot of music. There's a lot of like ambient, like white noise or like wind blowing, wind howling noise like a lot of nature and very once in a while you'll hear like three strokes of a key, like piano and you're like oh yes music but it it pretty much ends there um and i think just value for your uh, value for your money for your time it's very good it's very good at keeping you immersed 
uh, when I was playing this uh, in the winter, early spring, I think my girlfriend didn't see me for like a week or something like that. So I was definitely immersed. And um, all I wanted to do was 100 percent it. Um, I never did just because the game is so massive. But in the, I did enough to to my satisfaction. And um, just from a value perspective, I think it has a lot of replay value, but maybe even maybe not even replay value because you might not ever 100% it just you can continue to play it and do the side quests that you never explored or spend more time in the regions that you didn't explore as well so yeah I, I do think it holds up to today's games um, and I do think it is worth uh, the money oh. you got to worth it how about you Tim what do you think I I mean yeah I once like when when I replayed it um and I, I guess I, I streamed it earlier earlier this year as one of like my backlog games to finish. And kind of like along my journey, you know, I ran into some people who've played this game like seven times now or something that like the game is so replayable to them. They're just like, yeah, I'll just play this like every few months or something. And I'm like, holy, you know, like this, you know, like all these like new games are coming out and like, yeah, they're still spending time to play like Zelda. I mean, like. Some people may only have a Switch or, or uh, Wii U because it is playable on Wii U. Um, but I, as I think most people, it can either be their main console or their secondary console. And I think with uh, just kind of like this is the the next potentially like a Skyrim, you know, like if this was on PC, this would be the next Skyrim because it could just be the modded the heck away. Right. But um, but just the 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 value and the. The stuff that, like, the experiences that you can get from Zelda, uh, Breath of the Wild. I was about to say Breath of the Wind. But uh, it's just kind of, like, one of those things that, like, yeah, it's just, there's always, like, a wow factor. Or there's possibly always something new that you can figure, some find something about the game, too. So it's, that's, like, the really cool thing as well. So, yeah, this is definitely worth it, for sure. I hope it goes on sale, but, like, I know as of this recording, me and David checked, and it's still 80 bucks, even on, like, Black Friday, so we're, like, are people still buying this game? Maybe, but like, damn, it's it's not even on sale, and it's three years old. Crazy. <laughs> it is a first-party title or whatever you call it, like the Nintendo's uh, first-party property or whatever. So it makes sense that it rarely ever goes on sale. But uh, I will say that it's refreshing that it's a game that you can play at your own pace in a world of you know a lot of. Um, MMORPGs or just um, MOBAs and things like that. You're like you don't have to compete with your friends or anything like that. It's just nice to pick up and put down Go at your it. leisure. David, what do you think after all the possible criticism and just the the thing of the game? You know, like what do you think? I think you guys are great salesmen. Um, you guys explain a lot of information that answered my question. For me, I would say yes, just because all the story you guys you guys mentioned about the story, about the gameplay, the content, it gives me the impression that you will get an awesome experience compared to all other. Um, for me, a game that's worth it is when you get the unique experience from it, based on you guys' mission. Definitely get that. So I would say, based on I never play it, I would say I think it is worth picking it up. Uh, to play for your Fridays. Yeah, that's my answer to that question. Uh, I guess we'll end with, you know, like what are what games are you guys playing nowadays? If you are playing any. <laughs> I'm actually taking a break right now, a bit of a bit of a detox. So uh, I, I'm not really playing anything. Uh, th this is why I'm casual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. uh, for myself, I, I think real breath of the wild fans would hate me for this but um i'm playing genshin impacts which is <laughs> to me pretty similar but I was like, no 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 it's totally different um and also the witcher 3 which is which is great oh how far are you in that i i finished it once um i'm playing it again because like i'm trying to pick a different like storyline pretty much yeah sick um i think for me i just finished I just finished beating uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales, and yeah, that was what an experience, I would say. <laughs> um, Wait, yeah. you're done? Yeah, I beat the whole story, I uh, finished all of it. 
Endgame. There's some stuff after the story, guys. So Ooh. stuff there. There's some Endgame stuff. Um, but I would say phenomenal game. Definitely worth it uh, for your Fridays. Yeah, it's very good. Um, after that, um, I guess I'm taking a little break. I've been working more, so. How about you, Tim? Um, same as casual, Tim. You know, I'm not playing playing Battle of the Wild anymore. I'm playing Genshin Impact. <laughs> uh, maybe you should make a video of that or something. I don't, I don't know, but. Uh, uh, yeah, it's just uh, Genshin Impact has more stuff to do because of like they they actually listen to people's feedback. Um, they they gave us an event that actually has us like working like co-oping together, co-oping, and just like playing more. I think is like like what people want. That's kind of like I, I'm a little bit like eh about it because I'm like I I don't want to play it as much, but I'm like it's it's so immersive right now as well. It's just like I can't stop playing it, so it's. I need, I need a balance. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, um, thank you guys for sticking to the very end of this video. Um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe our channel. And as well, if you want to be the first one to know of our video being posted, hit that notification button. But thanks again. Um, appreciate our special guests here. And uh, hope to see you next time. All right. All right. Okay. See ya. Bye.